Sports Radio, 95.9, The Fan. Welcome to the Knock On Sports Podcast, where the craziest thing that you think a person can say will be said on this show. I'm your host, Anthony Knockliner, and we'll be talking college football playoff. The final rankings were released this past week, and I disagree, but my guest, he agrees with the rankings. He's a Big Ten man from Spartanville, and he coaches college football in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. His name is Trey Cochran. Trey, how you doing today, buddy? Hey, Knock, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on today. Not a problem, buddy. Me and you kind of had a Twitter battle earlier in the week, and I challenged you, and I said, listen, you want to go on the podcast, and let's have this discussion, and uh, you sound like you're ready today, buddy. Hey, I was glad that we could get it off of 140 character limits. I had a lot, to, a lot on my mind and a lot of stuff I wanted to give you, Knox, so uh, I appreciate the invite to come on and, and have a little friendly debate on it today. I'm looking forward to it. First of all, Trey Cochran, he is the cornerbacks coach for Wisconsin Lutheran College, but that's his, not only his only job title at Wisconsin Lutheran College. Trey, uh, can you just give us a little bit of background on what you do for the college and uh, how you got there? Yeah, no, uh, that's uh, no problem, Knock. I can kind of give you a little background. Like you said, I'm currently the uh, cornerbacks coach at Wisconsin Lutheran College, located in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I also recruit and enroll our adult and uh, graduate study students here at the college as well, along with recruiting uh, football players. I'm actually from Michigan, uh, but I came over here to play college football at WLC, so I get to work and coach for my alma mater. No greater feeling in the world. Very blessed, and uh, we're coming off a conference championship this season, so I'm on, I'm on a high horse right now, and I'm going to use that momentum in this debate with you. I look forward to it. I was going to say, I, I want to congratulate you guys and the staff for getting that first conference championship. You, yourself and, and me, we were on the team together, and we just weren't able to get that one. But uh, I'm glad you guys got it. Uh, how is the ring fitting going? Uh, if you've got a spare, let me know. Send it down, will you? <laughs> Hey, that's funny you mentioned that. We actually are going to get fitted today for our, our rings, so I'll be sure to at least uh, show you what they look like, and uh, maybe uh, you have to come up here, we'll have to hang out, uh, take you out for a couple of drinks or something, I'll wear that ring out. Hey, that sounds like a plan as soon as I get <laughs> up there. Um, but like I said, no, Trey's on here. We're going to talk about the College Football Playoff Committee. They released their final rankings uh, this past weekend, and obviously we know Alabama's number one, Oregon's number two, Florida State's number three, Ohio State's number four. Trey, let me ask you this. I know we talked about it already, but do you think the college committee got it right? Do you think this is the right setup? Well, obviously with the playoff setup, I mean, it's exciting that we have a playoff in general. So I want to just say that that's, that's, that's the right thing to do, have the playoff. You know, four teams is a start, talking about expanding it possibly down the road. That's great, but looking at just having a four-team playoff, that's right. Now, looking at the committee and the four teams they picked to put in, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, that's, that's my stand. I think a lot of people agree that Alabama and Oregon are the consensus one-two. I don't think there's much argument uh, among anyone about the one-two rankings, but three-four is where things kind of get you know, a little muddy there with Florida State, Ohio State, Baylor and TCU for various reasons, obviously, um, that everyone has their opinion on those. But as it stands right now, one through four, I have no problem with who the playoff uh, committee put into the final four and for the semi games. Now, here's my next question. Now, Florida State, they're undefeated. Now, granted, their wins haven't looked pretty. They, I guess I would say they don't look like the number one team at times, but they're undefeated. Do you agree that do you think they should be the number one team because they are undefeated? Or what's your thoughts on them being number three? I guess looking at Florida State and the games that they've played this year, I watched a lot of the Florida State games. They had a lot of primetime games, and then I was just interested in, in some of those matchups, like, say, the Clemson game, um, et cetera. And watching them play, I don't feel like, talent-wise, they're the number one team in the country, but they are defending national champions, and they are undefeated. And looking at how teams have been ranked in the past with the AP polls and the computers and whatnot, there's no way that Florida State would have ever left that number one ranking by winning. So, you know, the old saying, just win, baby, just win. There's no way they would ever drop from number one. What this playoff committee has now kind of opened open Pandora's box on is the way we look at teams. It's not just a win. It's not what you're coming in in preseason rankings on, but it's the quality of the wins, how you're playing. They're even taking injuries into consideration. We're starting to be able to look at this from a hu- and more of a human aspect, I think, than the computers and the polls have really uh, – conditioned us to look at these last years leading up to the, the first year of the playoff committee. We're here with Trey Cochran, uh, a cornerbacks coach for Wisconsin Lutheran College, among his other duties for the college. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, I believe, at Trey Cochran. Am I right, Trey? At Trey Cochran underscore. I think at Trey Cochran still taken by someone who hasn't tweeted for five years. I'm trying to get that changed. 
<laughs> all right. All right. Um, but either way, so we're talking about the college football playoff, and he agrees that all four teams are there. Now, myself... I disagree. I don't think Ohio State should be there. Now, my various reasons being, one, the Big Ten has not had a strong showing this year. Now, they've got good football teams. Wisconsin, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. They disappeared in the Big Ten championship game, but Ohio State came to play. Michigan State, you can never discredit them, one of the best teams in the country. But I felt like after you got past those teams, and Minnesota was a team on the rise, but once you got past those teams, I think there was a big drop-off on the Big Ten, and that's why I don't know, if, one, if they should be there, and two, their quarterback situation. They're on their third quarterback. He was a, a freshman starting in the Big Ten championship game and played very well. I'm just curious. You talked about the injuries. You got a third-stream freshman quarterback playing quarterback against Alabama. I just, You tell me, Trey, do you think that Ohio State should be there with that freshman quarterback? Well, the, I want to kind of go back a little bit here now because the way this debate started is you claim that Ohio State shouldn't even be in the conversation. I think that is a pretty bold statement looking at their win-loss records compared to TCU and Baylor. And then actually after you stack up their strength of schedule, Ohio State is right up there, and depending on what index you're looking at, actually had a better strength of schedule. I agree that they have the worst loss on their schedule this year with the Virginia Tech loss and seeing how Virginia Tech ended up um, going through the rest of the season. Traditionally, Virginia Tech's a very storied program, a good program. Ohio State, when they make that schedule, probably doesn't foresee Virginia Tech having such a down year. Now, looking at the two other schedules with TCU and Baylor, one thing's consistent with their schedules. The Big 12, I don't see any defense being played in those games. They are scoring ridiculous amounts of points, which is awesome. It's fun. But looking at the Big 12, I just see it as a kind of a score, um, score first, really entertaining conference, but looking at the quality wins they have back and forth, I don't see much discrepancy between these schools and and their strength of schedule. So it does come down to, I think, what have you done for me lately type of uh, action. So at Michigan State, at Minnesota, in versus Wisconsin in the Big Ten championship game with Ohio State, a huge way to end the season with three of their last uh, uh, five games being those versus TCU and Baylor, who are maybe playing that quality of competition at the very end and don't have a conference championship. You know, I, I will say this. I, I to a degree, I probably shouldn't have I should have stressed that I shouldn't say Ohio State shouldn't be in it, but okay. I don't think the Ohio State should be in the final four. Listen, they're a good football team. I'll give them that. They obviously won their they won the Big Ten. I just feel like TCU, they played a I won't say a tougher schedule. I feel like they played a pretty close schedule because mm-hmm. the top teams in the Big Twelve is Baylor and Oklahoma. You can make a case for OK State on some years, but this year they weren't a great team. But you still have Baylor and Oklahoma. Oklahoma was ranked very high this year once again. I don't know why, because they always end up doing this at the end of the season. We ask, where, why did, where did Oklahoma fall off? But I feel like TCU and Baylor, they still have the same thing that Ohio State does. Ohio State only has Michigan State and Wisconsin that were you know ranked teams consistently. Michigan was a poor team, and Ohio State was very much in that game with Michigan uh, the entire way. Uh, I just once again with a third with a third string quarterback, and you're playing Alabama. I just feel like this game's going to be a rout. See, that's the thing. I don't I don't think this is, game is going to be a rout, and I think Ohio State's going to um, compete in this game. And they're I think nine and a half point dogs right now. I see it being closer than that for this game, and the reason is this. Ohio State this year, Braxton Miller goes out in the preseason. Everyone writes them off. I'm a a Michigan State fan, all right? I think we've got an easy road to the Big Ten Championship looking at the schedule. We've got Ohio State at home. That's the one game I'm really worried about. And now Braxton Miller's out, who I know is a really tough quarterback to defend last year. Watch them play live in the Big Ten Championship game last year. Really tough quarterback. Then they come to JT Barrett. Amazing. Setting different records uh, for freshman quarterback and quarterback in general. Total touchdowns in the Big Ten. All right, he goes out. Bring in their third-string quarterback. What I know about both Alabama and OSU is that they have the two best recruiting coaches in the country. I think they have the two deepest depth charts at important positions probably in the nation right now. So looking at <clears throat> Alabama, if you go down to their third-string running back, and, and offensive lineman, et cetera, D lineman, these, both these teams can produce quality players that are better than a lot of other top-10 teams, first-stringers, I think. <clears throat> and that's going to be something that's going to bode well for Ohio State in this game. I'm not as worried about Ohio State getting blown out in this game as I am just uh, coming out against Alabama. Like you said, the confidence for a third st- or a third string quarterback coming into this game. But I think Ohio State and the way Urban Meyer runs a program, 
the expectations are there, whether you're you're the first string quarterback or the third string, that you got to be a baller. I mean, look at even Tebow was behind Leak at some point as they're going and winning national championships and, and coming in. So Urban Meyer's got deep rosters always. So does Alabama. I think and I really do hope that this is going to be a, actually a really good game. You know, it's funny, Trey, as I said uh, a couple days ago on the air, that if, if somehow I was asked the question, what if Ohio State, Ohio State beats Alabama? If that's the case, then I'm an idiot because honestly, I just I don't see it with Ohio State. I just and here's the other issue too. I find I go back to the history. Listen, Ohio State, they are they got great tradition. They're a great football team year in year out, decades. But my problem with Ohio State is is that if you look at their past bowl history, they ha- I don't know if they've won a big bowl game since uh, to, I believe it was 2010 2011 when they won the Rose Bowl with Terrell Pryor quarterback. If you go prior to that. They got their butts handed to them in 06 in the national championship, a game, and I believe in 07 or it was 08 against LSU. I, Ohio State, to me, f- right now, feels like a, like an Oklahoma. Like, if you put Oklahoma in these big bowl games, I feel like they let you down. And I think Ohio State's going to do the same thing. I agree with you that Urban Meyer is a great recruiter, but I think just with a third-string quarterback in Alabama, now, granted, their defense is not of the years past, I just I don't see it. I see TCU. They got that quarterback Boykin. He does a phenomenal job. I think they've got a lot of skilled players. Defense, you're absolutely right. There's no defense being played in the Big 12. <laughs> but I just make the case though. I think better I think Boykin's a better quarterback. And I guess I find TCU, you know, they only lost to Baylor who at the time Baylor was a highly ranked opponent. They beat Oklahoma. They beat the big dogs as they needed to beat, but they only lost to Baylor who Baylor lost to West Virginia. So, I just feel like TCU was better than Ohio State because I think that they played Oklahoma, which I think is a better team than any of the Big Ten, and I think uh, Baylor is a better team than most of the teams in the Big Ten. No, and I think you're right to uh, kind of be weary about Ohio State in bowl games, but being uh, a storied in a, in a history-rich college football team, you're going to be in those big bowl games, and you're going to have the ups and downs over your the history of the program. TCU and Baylor... You know, recently we haven't seen them in, in really big bowl games, national championship games, etc. Uh, TCU the other year won the Rose Bowl against Wisconsin, um, but I'm I'm looking at that and it's that kind of comes with the territory of being a big dog in a, in a, in a history uh, school like Ohio State. So you're going to have those uh, games to bring you know go back on, but this is a different team. This is a different time. This is a different era of college football, even going back to 2006 to now only. So I think that you got to look at that and say, you know, there are going to be those games that, that make you a little weary, and I, and I agree with you there. But that's because they've been a top dog for so long, and they've been up there. Uh, looking at TCU and Baylor, what I'm, what I'm curious is, Nock, do you put TCU over Baylor or Baylor over TCU in, in your rankings? I put TCU over Baylor just because Baylor lost to an unranked West Virginia team. TCU, okay. they lost to Baylor by three points. That game could have swung either way. So I feel like, you know, to make the comment, the, what I've heard over the years is, or over the last few weeks is that Baylor's better than TCU. I disagree. If Baylor was better, they wouldn't have lost to West Virginia. TCU didn't lose to West Virginia. So I, I think TCU, I put TCU above uh, Baylor at this point. And I think TCU could probably beat, if they were to play again, I think TCU would beat uh, Baylor this time. And I think a lot of people have, I think a lot of people are split in the TCU Baylor um, rankings right now. And I, the reason for that, and I'm going to stick to this, is I think the committee just did a really bad job when they jumped TCU up to the three spot over Florida State, based off of games that had no impact or that they weren't involved in. So because Mississippi State lost to Ole Miss. For some reason, TCU goes to three and Florida State to four, when if Mississippi State would have won that game, they would have stayed at four and Florida State would have stayed at three. Nothing would have changed. But for some reason, we switch around that based off a game that has nothing to do with TCU or Florida State. That started, I think, a love affair with TCU and a perception that, well, you're in the top four now. If you win now, there's no way you can drop out because we're so used to the polls and how they work in the past that if you you know you stay constant and you win your games you're going to basically hold your spot in the top four or five teams in the country that's obviously not the case anymore now on the other side i know a lot of people are saying baylor baylor's deserves a higher ranking than tcu because they beat them in the head-to-head i understand that as well I think that's the reason because people are so split between TCU and Baylor within their own conference, within their own, I mean, shoot, within their own state, that when the committee looks at this, they say, you know what, one extra game probably would have bode, bode well for both of these teams to play to really figure this out because Ohio State now has one extra win on their record because they're in a conference championship game against a top 15 opponent and they blow them out on national television. 
that's I think where that where that sway goes. I don't d- disagree that this is gonna this is close, but looking at TCU Baylor and saying I got to pick one of those versus Ohio State over here to go to the Final Four, it's kind of a thing where you say give me TCU and Baylor or give me neither. Yeah, I can I can see where the committee makes that point. I like I said as the, as the days have gone by and since the uh, since we they've, we've heard the release of the rankings, I think I understand that now because how do you justify putting one team over the other? And the committee probably didn't want to deal with that frustration. But I think ultimately, no matter what happens, I think next year and you tell me what you think. I think they've got to they've got to expand it to eight teams. I think. That way, you at least you don't have to hear about this conversation anymore. We stop having this conversation because there's eight teams. If you can't get within eight teams, then that's your problem. What do you think? I agree. I think eight teams would be awesome. Um, I'm for that. I think also you're going to see the Big 12 seriously consider adding a Big 12 championship game, even though they went away from that model this year, and they really promoted that and saying that we're going to have one true champion and or whatever their, their, their mantra and motto is, and then all of a sudden this round robin actually doesn't work out the way they thought, and TCU and Baylor are stuck in this predicament and actually get left out of the playoff system. So I think the eight-team model would be great. I'm curious to hear what a committee member would say about that. I think they were – I think they would like an 18 model to avoid situations like this because I think the one through eight could be pretty um, pretty solid this year and not as much argument. But you're always going to have someone left out. You know, we see it in the NCAA tournament for men's basketball. There's always arguments on the bubble teams there, and we're we're talking about 68 teams. Yeah. You know, so things are things are always going to get like that. I think this year with the TCU Baylor, it was the perfect storm of when that loss to Baylor happened for TCU. When um, how the how the season progressed since there, and then not having the conference championship game to end on, while seeing Ohio State on national television, just you know manhandle uh, Heisman hopeful and, yeah. and Gordon, yeah, and control true. that game with a third string quarterback, they kind of look uh, just unstoppable and kind of impenetrable right now, saying that nothing's really going to stop us. We've had close games. We've went to play at Michigan State, at Minnesota. You know, they even had the close overtime game against Penn State, Ohio State. Has. So I'm not saying that their wins have been so convincing and pretty that they're clearly the number four team. I'm just saying I can live with the four that are in right now. I agree with it. Um, I'm not going to say that TCU and Baylor got, you know, screwed on where they're supposed to be in, in the playoff system because at the end of the day, if you don't win all your games, then you're going to sub, you know, leave yeah. the door open and you're going to be subject to possibly getting left out. So at the end of the day, win all your games and then there's not going to be an argument. So I would have had a problem if Florida State was left out for that reason. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree with you. Florida State, that, I think everybody would have had an issue if you leave an undefeated team out. Uh, but let's, let's talk about the matchup real quick uh, yeah. before I let you go. Let's face it. We, I wanted to see Florida State and Alabama, and I wanted to see TCU and Oregon, or even, uh, you know, even let's, I'll go ahead and say Ohio State and Oregon. I feel like those two teams match up the styles of play that they have match up better. But now we have Alabama versus Ohio State and Oregon versus Florida State. Ohio State and Alabama, what do you think is going to happen January 1st? All right. For Ohio State and Alabama, like I said before, line's at 9.5 points. I see it being a lot closer. I'm not going to say that Ohio State is clearly going to win this game. I do think it's going to be a competitive game. I could see something about, you know, 27-31 20, Alabama. I think Alabama's favorited for a reason. Uh, obviously, their, tra- their fans travel very well. So does Ohio State. So compared to past bowl games where Alabama fans clearly outnumber um, their opponents, no matter where they're playing or what bowl game they're in, I think Ohio State's going to give them a run for their money there, something that Alabama's not really used to um, going and playing in bowl games. Plus, I want to see, and I'm interested in how this, this playoff system works with the semis and <clears throat> how fans tra- uh, decide to travel for a game. So Ohio State has Having their fans think that, hey, we're underdogs for this game, we got to make this count. Alabama fans saying, you know what, we'll just see the national championship. I won't even be surprised if Ohio State outnumbers Alabama fans at this bowl game. So I'm going to say it's going to be a 27 31 game, Alabama, but Ohio State's going to um, prove that they belong in this game and in the playoffs. All right, let's go to the other matchup, the Rose Bowl, Oregon mm-hmm. and Florida State. And you got a ton of speed with Oregon. Now, you got no slouch in Florida State. They got some speed, too. And uh, they got a very good freshman running back in Delvin Cook. How do you see that game playing out? Who do you take? Do you take the uh, Oregon Ducks, or do you see the Knolls taking this game? Well, looking at this game over in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl, Florida State was there last year for the national championship. <clears throat> I always like to see how fans are going to travel for games. I even mentioned that just for you here before. So I'm interested to see Oregon versus uh, Florida State. What's, what's the feel going to be there for that game? <clears throat> I think Oregon, they're also sitting at 9.5-point favorites for this game. This is a thing. If it's going to be a blowout or it's going to be a 
point game, it's definitely going to be Oregon's game. I don't see Florida State running away with a game like that against Oregon. That's not going to happen. However, if it's a close game, the statistics say that Florida State is going to be able to pull out a game if it's close. So it's either going to be a blowout one way with Oregon or Florida State's going to win the close game. Um, I don't see Florida State going the other way around. So looking at this game, <clears throat> I do believe, just because I watched both these both these teams play this year, I do believe that Oregon's going to run away with this one against Florida State. Nothing against Florida State. I think Oregon's just a better team right now with, uh, with how they've gone through the season. Mariota probably going to be the Heisman winner uh, going into this. So we have the Heisman currently the, uh, from last year and then possibly this year going against each other. I think Florida State finally uh, loses a little bit of luck that they've had this year and just winning those games that they've kind of squeaked out. So I see Oregon um, definitely running away with this one. We're talking with Trey Cochran here, uh, DB's coach or cornerbacks coach. I'm sorry for Wisconsin Lutheran College, as well as an enrollment advisor uh, for the graduate stu- adult graduate studies program. Uh, getting his picks now. First of all, I can't let you go without talking about your beloved Spartans <laughs> from Michigan State. Uh, how do you see their bowl game going? Well, right when I was watching the selection show and I saw that Ohio State was at four. I knew right away that the selection committee was going to put Baylor right after them because it seemed like with all the uh, analysts in, in, the, in the people talking about this that they kept putting Baylor over TCU in their rankings and in what they thought. So I thought, okay, the committee's going to put Baylor at five. They're going to put them up against a Big Ten team, Michigan State, who competed with Ohio State so that they can say and they can validate, hopefully they're thinking probably, if Michigan State beats Baylor, that puts to, you know, that squashes any argument about Ohio State being in the top four. Now this could go bad for them if Ohio State gets beat by Alabama and then Michigan State gets blown out by Baylor, but I don't see that happening. Right now, Baylor is a three-point favorite against Michigan State. I think that Michigan State has a really salty taste in their mouth this year, knowing that the two teams they lost to are in the Final Four. I think they're in their mind they're thinking, we want to finish the year as a top four, top five team. To do that, we know we got to go in and beat Baylor. It's going to be a home crowd for Baylor down in Texas. Michigan State surprises people with how they travel. Fans are awesome, so I'm going to go uh, Michigan State with the upset against Baylor of course question is 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 Mr. Cochran going to be taking a trip down to Texas <laughs> you know what I wish I was last year I was out there for the Rose Bowl uh, against Stanford uh, I don't think I'll be making this trip down uh, this year I'll be with some family in, in Florida actually down in your neck of the woods knock I'll have oh, to nice. uh, and show you uh, come down and maybe see you down there but I'll be with some of my family in Florida over the holidays uh, in the Orlando area so I'll, I'll enjoy the game with them um, but I'll be I'll still be cheering that's Trey Cochran, ladies and gentlemen. He's wonderful. He's a great guy. Appreciate him for coming on my show. Even when we were in college together, this guy knew college football like the back of his hand. Uh, Trey, once again, uh, you are the WLC admission student or adult student graduates. Or you, you go ahead and say it because I apparently can't get it out of my mouth. What, what That's do you do all right, Knox. Enrollment again? advisor for our adult and graduate studies program here. Coach Corners here at the college as well for our football team. Um, I really appreciate you having me on today. It's, it was awesome talking about this. No problem, buddy. I look forward to having you on again probably around, you know, January 3rd. So I hope you, got, uh, I hope you keep your schedule cleared for me, buddy. Let's do it. We'll have to run back some sound, bit, uh, sound bites from this uh, and see who's got to eat their words. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll definitely have to keep two words. <laughs> if 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 I gotta eat my words, I'll lose this. Don't worry. All right. Okay. <laughs> All righty, Trey. You have a great day, man. Thanks again. Uh, you too, Knock. Thanks for having me. Well, that does it for this edition of the Knock On Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Knockreiner, and you can follow me on Twitter at Knock On Sports nine five nine for all my latest updates around the world of sports. Hope everyone has a great week.